Two Tigers Acrylic Painting Time Lapse and Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi everyone, I am very sorry I've been absent from this channel pretty much all summer, but I have been really super crazy busy, but I am very happy to be back and I promise there will be more frequent uploads from this point forward. But for this video, it is actually gonna be his birthday present. This is my boyfriend Terrell, and he has no idea what this video is for because he has not yet received his gift. So that's why I'm being cryptic. Yeah, and she showed up like two weeks ago to my work with this clue. Uh, not knowing what it was for, I just followed it when we got back and I found the first part of it today, which is going to be for my birthday on Tuesday. Yeah, so he doesn't know, which is good. Very, <laughs> very confused. I guess we're going to keep it that way. Yeah. I hope you guys like this video and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to start the background. I already have this all sketched out on my canvas. I'm going to start the background with a very subtle gradient from an almost black, but it's actually dark green on the one side into a lighter green. And I did the black with the side with the lighter tiger and the brighter green with the orange tiger. And then I just airbrushed it to kind of break up the background so it wasn't just so solid. With the airbrush, you can really get a nice soft focus appearance. So then I'm going to begin with my orange tiger, my Bengal tiger. And just with orange, white, gray, black, brown, couple shades of orange actually. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to be adding all the first color layers and really sort of mapping out where everything goes and making sure that I get it so that it's a good base, a good base on there. So I've got that pretty much all of his fur and then I'm going to be adding some of his, not some of his stripes, all of his stripes with charcoal. Now the reason I'm using charcoal instead of black paint is because you can darken charcoal. You can't darken black because black is as dark as it gets. So I'm going to be using charcoal colored paint so that I have an opportunity to add more depth to it. And I'm adding all of his stripes there and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to be detailing his eye. So I'm going to start. Now the Bengal tiger has a very, very bright green eye. I'm going to add a couple more stripes in there and more of the facial details with a smaller brush than the one I was using before. Detail his nose. His nose is the same color as his fur except for it's just got a touch more of like a pink hue to it. So make sure you add that and then I'm going to be doing his tooth. So I'm doing all these small detail portions, eyes, nose, tooth, and gums area and then I'll go through and do all of the fur. So I began with diluted white paint and I'm adding the first layer of fur texture on there which later on I decided was not necessary in the slightest. I could have easily just skipped over this whole portion but if you haven't done fur texture in the past and you it's kind of like a first run for you definitely do do this with diluted white paint and kind of you have to do all of the hair texture just do some of it to kind of get the direction of the fur growth down so that once you're adding the final lines you don't get confused and all of your fur is going in the right direction and you have that base base down. I wouldn't have had to do this. I've I painted a critter or two in my time, so I could have gotten that down without a problem, which I did on the other tiger, but I was already here. I was already doing it. It was what it was. So then I'm going to take white paint, full strength white, and I'm going to be adding all of the fur texture in the areas that are white. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you add an overlap on the stripe. So if you've got a area of white fur that's on top of a black stripe, you're going to want to model the line and kind of create overlap the fur texture over the black line so that you don't have these really sharp lines. You want them to have this furry flowing from one color to the next color appearance. So I don't know if you guys can really see, but on the tops of each line, I'm just going through and I'm making sure that I'm covering up the line with some of this white fur texture. So I'm also going to be taking, he's got white on his chin, up his cheeks, above his eyes, and then a little bit on his the very tip of his nose and then on his chest. So I'm now I'm working on that. And also he's got a couple of little bits of white hair on like the underside of some of the black stripes. So I'm just going to go through and add all of my white fur texture and it does pick up the colors from underneath it. So you are getting some of that orange in the areas where it's orange underneath, which is going to kind of bring in some of the layers and the depth to your tiger's fur. So just keep adding these and then after you have the white done, you can go through and you can start adding the black fur texture. So then I'm just going to go through on top of all of my charcoal lines because you can add black stripes to charcoal and it will show up and it will look very furry. I'm going to take and just do all of that. Same thing though, you want to make sure that you take the black stripes and bring them down over some of that white fur. So you're layering all of these layers. And then later on when I add the orange, there'll be some layers of orange on top of these colors. The more layers you do and the more depth you add and the more colors you use and the more you overlap one color to the next color and bring the fur together and blend them, the better it's going to look. So there's, I don't know, probably a few thousand little fur lines on here probably more than a few thousand but just keep adding them and keep working on it it's one of those things where if you kind of get in a zone um it's almost like meditation you just keep going and all of a sudden you're done with a color and then you can pick up the next one so just keep working on it definitely 
don't go skimpy on your fur texture here. So then I'm going to use a lighter shade of orange than what I used in the very beginning when I was painting this guy. So it's a very light cream, creamy orange. I almost think of it as like a dreamsicle. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to be filling in all of my other fur lines that are missing so far. So just make sure that all of that area gets completely filled in. And all these fur fur lines, once you have them, you might be thinking, well, this is an orange section. This is a white section. You want to kind of overlap some of the orange and the white where it gradiates from one color to the next. So there's not these sharp lines. Just kind of blend them together a little bit, blend them through. And then with the Luda Black paint, add a couple shadows on him and a couple shadows on his chest in the fur. And then start his tongue with pink. So I'm going to begin with pink and then blend in some gray and some black and some white to add the little shadows on it. Now because his tongue is right up against that other tiger's ear, there's going to be a pretty heavy shadow on the underside of it. Or on the, actually it's the top side of his tongue. So make sure that you get that. Just a little highlight on the edge. Then you're going to want to add his whiskers. And the other thing for his tongue is you need to add the little barbs that are on a cat's tongue. I did that with a creamy color, like a light really pastel yellow and then like i said add his whiskers he's also got some crazy looking eyebrow hairs so don't forget those and then i'm going to begin with my white tiger so th for this guy i'm going to begin with the lightest color i'm using in this portion of it is light gray you don't want to use white because it's the same thing with the black you can't highlight white it's it's as highlighted as it gets so you got to use a darker color that you can then add highlights on top of so if you start with gray then you have an opportunity to build and to add dimension to it so then i'm once again using charcoal paint and i'm going to be adding all of this one's stripes so all of the stripes and now you might be thinking that your tiger needs to be symmetrical from side to side that is not the case definitely add some different striping pattern on the forehead and on the cheeks and on the face that will make it similar but not the same if that hopefully makes sense then i'm going to be detailing his nose and then his eyes this one has very light icy blue eyes so kind of a blue gray still blue though bluer than the fur and then go through and add the details to the um the fleshy area around the eyes as well at this point i would recommend also detailing his lips i did not i forgot i then i ended up doing that almost right at the end i don't know why i forgot but i did I just skipped right over that who knows so then the darker areas of the fur the areas where it's more of a shadow go through with a light gray color paint and do all of the fur texture so this one you're doing light gray in the darker areas they're very very light in color so you don't want to have anything that's too dark anywhere he's very pale kind of everywhere so same thing make sure that you go over the charcoal stripes with some of your white lines or your gray lines and then also after you have that, you're going to start with white, and I'm going to be doing white highlights on everything. Now, in the areas that you want to be brighter white, you want the lines, your white fur texture lines, to be closer together, and the areas that are a little bit darker, just spread them out so they're not nearly as close together. This is almost like, um, what's the word I'm going for? This is almost like doing a, like a ballpoint pen technique. I don't know if you guys have seen that where you just do like a cross hatching. There's the word I was going for cross hatching. The more cross hatches you get, the darker it gets. Well, in this case, the more white lines you get, the brighter it gets. So make sure that you kind of monitor that to make sure that you are adding some different levels of dimension as you are going through. Now, you could also use several shades of gray and white or several build ups to the white and only use white highlights in the very brightest areas. That's another technique that could definitely be used. I kind of like spacing my lines to get the different colors that I need and you're also getting some of the colors from underneath through so you are getting darker and lighter values from that as well so you kind of have to balance it to see how how it works for you and the other thing with these tigers that I want to mention and make sure that you guys don't forget don't forget to add their crazy ear hair I don't know if you guys have I'm sure you've noticed if you're a cat person cats have the most fantastic ear hair just in general it's beautiful I remember a cat that I had she was a calico she, really pretty kitty she had medium length hair but she had the longest ear hair it was so crazy it was like six times the length of her body hair and she was like a medium length cat so it was crazy but don't forget to add don't forget to add plenty of ear hair to these tigers and they also have like a very fluffy chin beard thing so don't forget to add that either i'm very descriptive chin beard thing it's very scientific and then add all of his white on his sides and his back these tigers because like i said i was finishing them for his birthday present i had to finish them while he was out of town for work and i had a very limited amount of time so i was working on these tigers until midnight and then getting up the next day and working super early it was kind of a little marathon painting session for me but it was it was good i got them done 
just in the nick of time too. So then go through and you're going to be adding your black lines just like with the other tiger. So just keep adding those black lines. As you're doing these lines, like I said, I did this in a marathon painting sort of session going on. I just, I had one of the tigers done and then with my work schedule and it just didn't work and I had to take a huge break from the painting. So I ended up with only a couple days to finish it. But um, so I got the one done and then I went back to the other one. But if you're painting a whole bunch of these lines at one time, your hand can definitely cramp. You can, it can definitely get exhausting. You might feel it in your shoulders. I just want to say that if you do paint, please take time to stretch and to make sure that you're healthy and make sure that you're eating. That's something that I always forget to do. If I'm painting, I will easily forget that I should be consuming food. Just goes right over my head. So that's it. That is the finished painting. Like I said, you are going to need to add the details to his lips. And then same thing with this guy crazy cheek hair or cheek hair whiskers is what most people call those add his whiskers and his chin hair i hope you guys like this painting please check out my facebook and instagram to see more of my art and i will see you in my next video bye